Okay, so today we have a distinguished guest, uh, Dr. Fabina Silva. She recently was uh, elevated to the position of president of Fascia Research Society, which I'm a member of. And I met her uh, in the last uh, Congress meeting in Montreal. So yeah. I'm very happy that we reconnected um, two years later, ahead of another uh, Fascia Research Congress meeting in Louisiana this year. Yes, yes. Which... And we are really happy and excited to be there because with three years, we have a lot of new things to talk and discover about fascia, right? Right. And then, and then I suggest everybody who are interested in this type of new information, which is the, the greatest and latest science, uh, if you're interested in your health and your fitness and performance, uh, you should be attending, right? You should purchase a ticket. And uh, well, we're going to have the website, I mean, the uh, information in the uh, on the bottom of this. So people uh, who want to travel to Louisiana, which is a very, very nice and warm city they've never been to, uh, they can do so, right? Very mm -hmm. good. So, um, yeah, can you first uh, talk about, you know, your research area and how did you get into you know, this fascial space? Yeah, I'm a physiotherapist. I live in Brazil. And uh, I started studying fascia when I was undergrad. And I really like it because my background is manual therapy. And after I did my master in epidemiology, and I started to teach in a physio graduation school here. And I was with uh, students for 14 years. And one of my tasks on this was to do supervision in, in research. And uh, one of my students, she asked me, well, I wanna study about foam roller and uh, the work with runners. So we did this research and I presented this in the Connect Congress in Hume Uni University in 2017. Yeah, it that's was where Dr. Robert Schlepp is in. Yes, it was my first presentation about fascia. And after this, I started to, to be at the at this field and started to uh, study more and present more <laughs> researches and etc and now i'm doing my phd and i will put together chronic pain uh, fascia with stiffness and heart height variability and so the autonomic nervous system fascia and chronic pain so it's, it's something that I, I love and I'm always uh, beside the, the teaching, beside teaching, I'm always with patients every week because I'm a PT and I work uh, with chronic issues at the most for spinal chronic issues. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that is, it's good to put together the research and the clinical practice and uh, that's it it's why i'm in this field because i first because i love and in on second because i'm try to navigate in between research and the clinical practice oh very good very good the fascia is that is that uh, uh network is that uh, gel that uh, integrates everything um, yes so so what do you, what what do you say to for example the the people who don't know about fascia um, and, you know, for example, in the, um, the mainstream strength conditioning, you mm -hmm. look at the anatomy. In the anatomy, it doesn't have the fascia in there. It just have the muscle attachment. Like, yeah. what, do you, what do you say? How do you uh, present this information, for example, to a strength coach um, mm -hmm. and, and the importance of the fascia in the, in the anatomy? Yeah. Um, well, this person is missing a piece of the whole scenario, right? Mm -hmm. 
because I, what I try to explain is that when you look for origin and insertion or insertion from one, one point of the mus muscle in the other point, what links these two points together is fascia. Because uh, every muscle in our body have his one fascia, his, his own fascia, like the epinesial fascia. But when uh, the muscles end this, in, at the edge of the muscle and the tendon, the tendon, the continuity is a myofascial expansion. And through the tendon and to link with the, the bone, there is fascia too. It's my, my first explanation. And other thing that I try to explain is that for doing something like uh, uh, kick on one ball or stand up or walk or etc., we we can do this just uh, firing one muscle. We need to fire one group. We need to work with the nervous system too. And so I try to explain the the concept of the myofascial chains that are group, groups of muscles that work together, not just the old concept about the antagonists. Oh, this muscle do this and the other do in a opposite direction. And I try to explain that they work together. Uh, when you try to strength your biceps for example your triceps is working together and so it's really difficult to isolate muscles activity in human body in our body so i try to explain this and um, give for people this concept that fascia hold everything everything together and connected and helps the muscle to transmit part of the force that is generated inside the muscle. Mm. So, and this is important because the muscles go, uh, they spend a lot of energy and fast. So how you can explain that one person can walk for hours and just depending of the muscle energy. So there is another system that do like a, uh, like a spring that keeps the energy inside, that is fascia and tendons. And when you, we walk, this system release the energy slowly. So it's why we can maintain a lot of activities for a long time. If we depend just for the muscles, we we can't do uh, some tasks for a long time, just depending of the energy of the muscles contraction. Right. Uh, so I'm going to play a devil's advocate. Uh, so some strength uh -huh. coach, strength culture will say, well, the uh, you know the muscle contract, the the fascia, you know, they, they, it doesn't contract. So. Therefore, it's it's the, the muscle is more important. What what do you what do you say to that? <laughs> yeah, something that uh, uh, we learned uh, like I since two thousand nineteen mm -hmm. is that fascia contracts, but fascia contracts uh, with a contraction more similar to autonomic nervous system, like a more similar to visceral components and circulatory system. So it's a contraction that holds everything together. That uh, is one part of something that we, we call our postural tonus. So this contraction of fascia uh, every time, every second keeps us or, or helps us to be against gravity, for example. It's like our postural tonus. And when the muscle generates...